How's it going everyone? College Lefty and in this video I have for you all the Signature Series Duke Snyder debut as well as I'm going to be trying out Larry Doby in this event. I figured why not? This card is pretty similar to the one that we got last year. He just has a little bit lower vision. Yeah, really every attribute is the exact same except for a minus 10 on vision. Larry Doby is also looking pretty good. I'll be trying him out in this one. But honestly, I've never really hit that well with a Larry Doby card. I mean, I used him a little bit in MLB The Show 18 because I had to grind for Immortals. And ever since I unlocked the Immortal, I just never used him after that. But anyways, we will be using Greg Maddox on the mound as well, facing David Ortiz here, starting this game off with a home run given up in the first inning. I mean, in this event, you're playing on All-Star. Uh, you're trying to get your starting pitcher through the, at least the first inning, or at least I am, because I'm trying to grind out stats with Greg Maddox. It just seems like sometimes when you when you use a pitcher with lower hits in K per nine, especially on All Star, they give up you know a lot of weak base hits, a lot of uh, late jammed hits or early bloopers. And here's a really good example of it right here. I mean, a seeing eye single through the right side, and Rogers Hornsby pulls this one. This is a cutter low and away, and he swung like with a one handed swing, uh, kind of just blooped that one in. I mean, I've hit. I've gotten hits like that before. I've hit the baseball very similar and gotten rewarded in that way. We might even have, you know, a couple late base hits of our own or early base hits in this video as well. But here we have Duke Snyder in his very first at bat, and I just hesitated on this 12 6 curveball from Roy Oswalt. I was debating on whether I even wanted to swing. I mean, 2 0, that was a hanger, and I missed it completely. That pitch was definitely hittable. Anyway, we have Larry Doby up in his first at bat. And I got on top of that one. That was a pitch that was a little bit low in the zone. Good good hittable pitch if it was a little bit higher. But uh, anyway, we are giving up, you know, another couple base hits in this next inning. David Ortiz smacks one on a hit and run. He's going to be able to go first to third there. Just a little unlucky so far here in this first game. As Tony Gwynn hits one down the line, this one bloops in as well. I mean, that was a solid hit. Just... Definitely has that early feedback on it. You know, he has 125 contact. That's certainly going to help him. It's just uh, we're getting a little unlucky. Everything seems to be, you know, finding a hole, falling through. And now we need to get a couple base hits of our own because we only are down to our last six outs. I mean, we're playing three inning games here. His pitcher is going to start to get a little bit tired, just like mine. If I were to go to a reliever, uh, you know, he might throw four or five pitches, and then that's it. He's in that yellow range. It's much tougher to get outs in that way. So I'm trying to take advantage. I mean, eight pitches from Mariano Rivera. We are able to expand the zone a little bit. Hit this cutter inside on the hands for a knock after Craig Biggio goes deep. Now we brought in Larry Walker as a pinch hitter. I mean, I'm using some guys on the bench that are better than Duke Snyder and Larry Doby. I just wanted to try these cards out in this event. And the reason why I'm doing it in this event is because I just don't have a place for them on my ranked seasons team. I don't know why I would want to go into a game of ranked with you know lower rated outfielders i'd rather just do that in the event something that doesn't matter at all and here uh duke snyder goes deep on a pitch up above the zone definitely a solid hit i mean i should, probably should have had another one right here with larry doby i did miss it though i was under it i was, had pretty good timing there on the early side of good just barely um missing that perfect timing window but we do take you know a two-run lead we scored five in that last inning but honestly i mean i just wasn't hitting the ball that well consistently so far in these first three innings. We are able to earn uh, one of these prestige players, though, in this uh, prestige XP reward path. And I'm just going to go ahead and probably select uh, either Barry Larkin or Mini Minoso. Those are the only two players I have left. I already have prestige Ryan Sandberg. I already have Buster Posey and Reggie Jackson, uh, both prestige. And that's who you would get out of, these, out of this pack, as you can see here. But uh, a lot of people are prestige level 100 already. I kind of have slowed down, you know, my XP grinding and playing showdown and just really just grinding against the computer in general. I've just been playing uh, the event, a handful of games of ranked seasons. Haven't really played any BR. I talked about playing BR, you know, a while ago, and I just never really got into it too much. But I decided to take Barry Larkin out of this pack just because I don't really like Mini Minoso in the game. I, I don't really like the way he sets up his swing and everything, but... That probably would have been the better card to choose if I were going to use those players because he would have diamond fielding and 90 speed out there in left field. But anyway, let's go ahead and hop into another game here. We're going to be using Madison Bumgarner. And whenever I'm using Madison Bumgarner in this event, I'm always batting him at the top of the lineup because I'm trying to go deep with them. Here we get a base knock from Duke Snyder. 
And now we're trying to hit one out with Mad Bum for a two-run shot to start off this ball game. Why not? I mean, this pitcher can hit a little bit. I like using him, and I haven't hopped into a game of ranked with Mad Bum. But hopefully uh, he doesn't fly out to the warning track in ranked seasons like he did here because that was a pretty solid swing. I mean, a little bit on the... Uh, the higher launch angle, I would say, I think that was like 38 degrees rather than like 30, 30 to 35 is kind of what you want for a home run. But uh, we're also lining out with Larry Doby. Not much action with Larry Doby so far. And here we get a hit and run going. I tried to steal second with Duke Snyder. The only reason I'm trying to, you know, run a, a steal or a hit and run play is because I just want to see if he's capable of stealing a base. He has 47 steal rating and only 74 speed. But I have, you know, taken a few bases with a couple slow guys throughout the year i swung way too early on that cutter with babe ruth right there and uh next inning we are able to get something going here take a one nothing lead stan musial with the solo shot for a one nothing lead and uh this opponent went one two three in the first inning we were able to kind of shut him down a little bit with mad bum but he got something going here in the bottom of the second jimmy rollins makes an error on this play they ruled it as a as a base knock but that's diamond defense i i thought that for sure was going to be an easy double play. Now we got to face Joe Torre, and Jimmy Rollins makes a web jam. I mean, just like that, I don't know what Jackie Robinson's doing on that throw. He should have just, you know, touched the base with his right foot and threw the ball. But he does a 360, and we got the double play. That's all that matters. We got the double play. Now we got to face Araldus Chapman with Duke Snyder. We go uh, a little bloop single to left field right there. Now we have Vladimir Guerrero in for the pitcher in the two spot. Not something you see all the time. But we are able to smack a home run with him. I'm definitely replaying this one. I want to see where that ball landed. Uh, I think that ball is launched off the bat. Probably 113, 114 off the bat. And uh, yeah, look at Vladimir Guerrero waving that one fair. We got Larry Doby warming up in the on-deck circle. Hasn't really done anything. Got out. Uh, once again, popped up to the catcher. Here we pop one up with Babe Ruth. Not the best that bad. I mean, I had a couple really good pitches to hit throughout this game. Some cutters right down the middle, uh, fastballs up and away right there, missed a few of them, and now I didn't warm anyone up in the bottom of the third inning. So made a couple mistakes here. Can't expect to uh, can't expect to get anybody out when you don't don't warm anyone up, and also with the stamina the way it is in these shortened three inning games. I mean, Eric Gagne is going to throw three pitches and he'll be tired, uh, maybe even less. But here he leads this one off with a bunt. Now he was indeed tired after throwing three pitches. And this one is going to get down. I didn't have anybody uh, in right field or really anyone in the outfield that can play defense well. I'm really using Duke Snyder in center, Larry Doby in left, and Babe Ruth in right. And I wouldn't recommend that outfield at all. But here we get a nice double play ball. Jimmy Rollins to Jackie Robinson. And it's not made. I mean, that was a pretty slow turn. Kind of a chopper. Can't expect to get Mickey Mantle out there. But uh, we brought in Araldus Chapman. Not a great move. I mean, it was uh, to face a lefty-lefty matchup. And he went to Chipper Jones. But Araldus Chapman pitched the last game. I didn't reset the team. So he uh, is in the red range or yellow range at this point. Only, you know, a few pitches in. Uh, yeah, he didn't have any energy when I brought him in to begin with. But we're trying to get this last out. You know, this guy is going to be able to hit everything. Like I talk about in the videos, you know, if you, if you leave in a pitcher like this, you have to because he hasn't faced three guys yet. But if you leave in a pitcher with yellow stamina, I mean, I probably could have struck this guy out three or four times within this at bat. And now we, we still have him 0-2. We're going to end up hitting him 0-2 or 1-2. And, uh, yep, now we've got to face Babe Ruth with the bases loaded. And, I mean, red stamina, he's just going to hang one eventually. Not the worst feedback on that pitch. But, I mean, the opponent, you know, you got to tip your cap. He, he laid down the bunt. He hit the grand slam to win it. He also messaged me on Instagram and uh, said that was a good game and everything. Uh, you know, he said he watches the videos and, and stuff like that. That's awesome. I just messaged him back, you know, LOL, nice bunt. I thought that was a, a pretty interesting way to, you know, walk that game off or finish up that last inning. It's all good, though. You know, I was just, I'm just messing around. I'm batting my pitcher in the two spot. These event games don't mean anything to me. I'm just looking to get some gameplay with Duke Snyder and Larry Doby. And we haven't really done anything with Larry Doby. So hopefully in this video or in this game, we can kind of turn that around towards the end here. But uh, we tie it up. We gave up a solo shot. We tie it up with Rogers Hornsby. Babe Ruth coming in off the bench this time. Just mixed up the lineup a little bit. He's going to send that one off the wall. I have no idea how. That pitch was inside. Uh, I don't know how he kept it fair, but I'll take it. I mean, that's a double. 
I've given up, you know, a couple of questionable hits uh, in this video, and I've also earned some as well. So it's going to happen, especially on All Star. But here we have a chance to walk the game off with Larry Doby, and he throws one right down the middle. I missed it a little bit, a little bit late, but that is going to be a sack fly. So we don't get any knocks with Larry Doby in this one. He reach on an error and also hit this sack fly game winning hit. So that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the little bit of gameplay that I got with Duke Snyder and Larry Doby. And uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out.